Hey there, comic book fans. I figured we'd take a look tonight at this uh, big artist edition, which I got back when it came out, which was, I think, before I was making videos, so I never made a video of it. This is John Romita's Amazing Spider-Man Artist Edition Volume 2. I never got Volume 1, because I, I got Volume 2. So I think Volume 1 had more of his pencils and inks in it. I can't remember. I had some reason for liking Volume 2 rather than Volume 1, but I can't remember it now. Because let's see. Nice Spider-Man figure there. Um, yeah, came out 2013. Uh, originally published in Amazing Spider-Man issues 106, 108, 109, 110, 111, 112, 113, 114, and 115. This is one of the earliest of the artist editions. Uh, to Virginia. Virginia Romita is his wife, and I think they were uh, high school sweethearts. So they were out together a very, very long time. Uh, she was my boss when I worked at Marvel for Virginia. She was the traffic manager. She was in charge of the bullpen and in charge of getting all everything out in time. She'd traffic all the work. Pencils and inks by John Romita. Additional inks by Frank Giacoya, 106. Yeah, because I think, I think this one had pencils and inks by John Romita. That's why I, I preferred it um, to volume one. Let's see what we got here. Credits page. Is this one that has the covers in the bottom? Unpublished pencils. John Romita's Amazing Spider-Man Artist Edition Volume 2 is part of an ongoing series, one dedicated to showcasing outstanding artists in a format as special as their work deserves. So this is, you know, um, oh, the, you know the, indeed, 1972, so this is early 70s John Romita work. Uh, John Romita, Frank Giacoya inks on this one. Oh, who's, on, who's on the letters? Artie Simic. Lettering Sam Rosen, okay. Wow, it's great seeing these full figure Spider-Man shots at an artist edition size. This is the size they were drawn. They're on a 10 by 15 image on 11 by 17 inch paper. I like that J. Jonah Jameson. Let's see if I can be able to pick anything up. You know what? I think I'm going to have to close that blind over there because the sun's going to be changing as I sh shoot this. Hold on one second. There we go. If we get direct sunlight on these pages, it might make them harder to see. And it's just about that time that uh, direct sunlight's going to be coming into... Ooh, I love this shot here of these various faces. That face over there looks almost Kirby-esque. And that, the, the guy with the two buck teeth, that looks like a Dan Klaus drawing. <laughs> oh, that's another, just these little, like, this, this little framing shot here of these guys. Great shot right there. Nice, nice Peter Parker. Peter Parker mask face. I wonder what that was about in the story. Lots of Spider-Man swinging and wall call. Oh, there's one of the Spider Slayers. I remember those. No Big Brother. Soul Brother, not Big Brother. Excellent lettering, too. I like that, uh, just that Spider-Man lettering right there. It's just a nice, nice piece of lettering work by Sam Rosen. I like that figure right there. I, th I think, uh, who was doing the inks on this again? Mike Esposito? No, Frank Giacoya, right? Frank Giacoya. Frank Giacoya is doing a nice job on these inks. Wow, that's a great shot. Great shot of Peter Parker right there. Some more. You can see how much handsomer John Romita's Peter Parker is than Steve Ditko's at the beginning. A nice kissing shot there. That that could be a uh, a Roy Lichtenstein pop art panel, couldn't it? Oh wow! Now we get now now it kind of gets wide open with Spider-Man doing stuff. Caught in a giant web. Oh no! The Spider Slayer has got him. 
I like this back shot of Spider-Man too, looking back over his shoulder. Stat shot from original, I guess uh, this is shot from an old stat, they don't have the original art. And now we present the most unnecessary phrase we've ever penned, continued next issue. What a, wow, what a great shot that is. We have the web acting sort of as perspective lines, but they're out of perspective with this Dutch angle, tilted perspective. And this guy's coming down. There's like two different perspectives working there that it's quite amazing because Spider-Man and the Spider-Slayer are at that perspective, but then the whole background is at that perspective. So that's an interesting bit of uh, visual juggling there. I like that. Now we get to 108. And um, I think uh, John Romita, illustrator, so he does the whole thing here. I think John Romita always says this is his favorite story. Uh, he, I think because... I think because it has something to do with Terry and the Pirates, why it's his favorite story too. I forget the I forget the story that go oh some nice darks and black and if you if you look here, he's using this technique. See those white marks in black? You do that by taking a razor blade and scraping the black ink. So you can see uh that was one of his techniques he was using here for putting motion lines in the black and motion lines right here in the black. You scrape at it, uh, you scrape the ink off and reveal the paper underneath. Hey, something was pasted down there. Nice. Nice lush backgrounds. Good, good faces. I like that uh, GI and the uh, woman face. Very nice. Oh, that's one shot from a stat again. Not the original art. Oh boy, look at that. That panel right there is just, it looks like he went into it with some white out too. He was getting the blacks and whites just right in that panel and he did. That looks really nice. Wow, and look at this panel here. Once again, just so beautifully composed and drawn. There's foreground, middle ground, background. He's working on some blue pencil on this page. Oh, he got the blue pencil over here, too. I guess he did his layouts in another stat page. Ooh, I like that heavy eyeliner Gwen Stacy there. Very nicely done. Let's see what else we got. Bathoom! Oh, there's a nice... Uh, heavy blacks on the front. Peter Parker with a spider. Wow, look at that page. What a kick. Once again, we get the... Um, he's hacking at it with a razor blade to give us those motion lines. That comes out as all those little dots. Once again, he's doing it. He's, in that swing of the punch, he's giving us the razor blade motion lines, too. Look at that. Plenty of it over here, too. Wow. He really is uh, enjoying using that technique on this issue. The dread decision. Yeah, another stat page. Enter Dr. Stramor. Once again, straight up John Romita, Hardy Simic on the letters. The lettering in these is beautiful, too. I mean, hand, these hand letterers were so good. Another great Gwen Stacy. Heavy eyeliner shot. Big dark. More of that technique. Oh, good Doctor Strange there. Oh, that's a nice panel. I love that figure a lot. Got really chunky on the Spider-Man inks up here, too. Much chunkier than other stuff. I wonder if someone else did that. You know, it's because he's getting... Oh, wow. Look at that panel. Look at that down shot of Spider-Man going into the... Doctor Strange going into his body. That's real nice. Great technique with the vertical lines there. Wow. More brush marks and 
that scraping. I didn't realize until I'm looking at this how much scraping he did. He did quite a lot. I really like that face there, that panel. Let's see if we can get it up there. Look at that. Nicely done. Let's keep flipping. Nice there, nice there. Wow, his inks are really nice. Really enjoying his Gwen Stacy. I don't think I've looked at Gwen Stacy in a long time. John Romita's Gwen Stacy. I'm really liking it. Doctor Strange, nice little white out effect there, whiting out the line with some scraping going on. Wow, lots of lots of motion lines, lots of scraping, lots of webbing. The texture on these two pages is great. That's very Ditko right there, the folds in that. He must have been looking at some Ditko. Oh, he, oh, look at this panel. He was looking at some Ditko. That's really a early Ditko Doctor Strange right there. And that's what artists do. They look at, when they're drawing something, sometimes you, you just put a page of Ditko near you to just kind of look at it. And maybe go, hmm, how, is Ditko, how did Ditko do these folds? Ah, oh, and then you do your own version of it. But you can see the you know a different thought process going on. That's a stat page, but who do we got here? We've got no inker, so it must have been John Reed. John Costanza on the letters. Lots of yellow. I wonder what happened. Uh, I wonder how the yellow usually means there was glue on it. I don't know how the page would get this glue all over it. Who's that weird Martin? Name's Martin Blank. Don't know that who that is, but look at that face. Nice. Lots of he was really inking this. Look at all that. Look at all the texture around here. Just in the crowd with the with the bushes all around him and the cage and just textures everywhere. He really put a lot of textures into his inking. Beautiful. Another Gwen. He just did such a nice Gwen Stacy, didn't he? I'm hardly the first to notice that. Look at that. <laughs> That's what, oh look, man, look at that Gwen Stacy. Just beautiful. What else do we have here? Poor Peter. There's that gorilla again. That scraping texture is all over. Look at that. Look at all that scraping in there, giving us motion lines in the black. The ape and the arachnid. To stalk a spider. John Romita, Jerry Conway production. Johnny Costanza on the letters. Craven the Hunter. The Gibbon. Oh, that was who he was. I remember the Gibbon. Barely. Whoa, look at all that scraping and Spider-Man shot. Ooh, nice little dramatic shot there of Spider-Man looking a little evil. That Joe Robertson, right? The Gibbon and Craven hanging out. Hey, you're an animal. I'm an owl hunter. Let's talk. No, let's fight. Lots of blue pencil in this one. Artists do that sometimes because this this light blue doesn't reproduce when you take a photo stat of it. So they'll often draw their layouts in light blue and figure that way they don't have to erase it. Wow, look at all this texture. He's got different lines, different weight lines back there. All that motion lines and motion scraping and texture on the table. Look at all that scraping. Wow, I I never noticed. Like I said, I don't think I've looked at this in seven years. I think I'd look at it a little more. That's a great panel right there too. Him sitting in the chair. That's an him down. That that's looking Ditko-esque right there once again. 
that uh, craving. Wow, this is fun. Kill, kill, kill! <laughs> Spidey cops out. Spidey flies away. 112. What do we got here? John Romita again, inking himself. Artie Simic on the letters. I wonder why it wasn't the same letterer every month. Nice Spider-Man figure there. As, you know, these days, and for years and years, you'd have you'd have the same letterer on the book every month. I wonder why this this period didn't have the same letterer on the book. Nice Spidey. Spidey hanging out by the wall. Spider-Man's true color, yellow. Spider-Man backs down. I haven't read any John Romita Spider-Man in a long, long time, so I don't remember what's happening in there. Is that Betty Brant? Oh, Miss Brant. Betty Brant, the one they say was based on Flo Steinberg back when Steve Ditko did her. Stan's gal Friday and longtime proofreader at Marvel from the 90s all the way through the 2015 or so. She was Stan Lee's gal Friday in the 60s. She was a proofreader in the 90s. <laughs> and she did a lot of stuff in between. Look at all that scraping going on there. Lots of scraping on these pages. Ooh, we got spirals. Ooh, the Spidey got bashed in the head. Ouch. Yellow Spidey. Oh, look at that page. Not oh, too bad it's a, a stat. We don't get to see the whole original. But it's cool enough. You must do. Holy cow, it's Doc Ock. Where did he come from? Nice Doc Ock shot. Artie Simic on the letters. Uh, John Romita with an assist by. T. Mortellero and Jim Starlin. Wow. A stat page. Ah, the old webbing up his glasses trick. Doesn't work this time. Nice back shot of Doc Ock. Peter Parker barely gets away. Doc has his mask. funny you can tell this is this isn't kind of as rich it's not as organized as the uh, there's a little more chaos to these inks you can tell he had art assists because it's uh, just kind of a little different oh nice nice panel there that figure looks a little starlin-esque but who knows i don't know that well there look at they look like this panel was patched over that's what all that glue is wonder what the patch was But you get checked out, you're hurt. That's a weird shadow on Spider-Man's face right there, those lines. Oh, this is where he's got the fake mask, no reflection, no uh, reflective eyes. Ooh, nice panel right there, womp. I have to say, overall, this issue isn't as rich. The, the, the ink's kind of, I mean, they're not bad by any stretch of the imagination. Like, that right there, that's really nice. But they're not quite as textured and rich as all the... All right, here, there's a nice... Take a look at that panel. It's Hammerhead. That's some nice stuff. Well, this video's going long. We'll have to keep flipping. Stat page. Oh, hit him right on the head. That's a nice hammerhead panel right there, too. Good face. Very Dick Tracy, that one for sure. Flat top, is it in Dick Tracy? And I forgot to look who's doing the work on this one. Oh, this is, yeah, the same art assist, same art assists on this one. So I guess uh, John didn't have as much time. Ooh, nice. Oh, that's very, uh, very Will Eisner there. Another one of John Romita's influences. 
along with Milton Kniff. Nice stuff. <laughs> that hammerhead just looks so cool. <laughs> It's weird seeing Spider-Man's eyes in this mask all the time. Is there a note over there? Color note. Professor Warren Gray Hair. Okay. Like, like, this panel is just, the textures aren't kind of the same. There's still some scraping, there's still some webbing texture, there's still some texture back there. But it's just kind of not organized the same. Like, there's still texture back there, but it's not quite as good as it was a few issues of. When he was doing all the, all the artwork himself. But that's beautiful right there, that panel. The texture and that, that car. And the texture in those uh, buildings is real nice. That's pretty cool, too. Oh no! Nice Aunt May face. Beautiful. Only uh, Tony is our art assist today. Oh, I like that. Hammerhead just looks so cool. He's got that cool flathead uh, Dick Tracy look. And the striped suit bashing things with his head. Man, Spider-Man's really beat up in these, these couple of issues. More ha There's a nice hammerhead panel. Oh, this is the Doc Ock hammerhead fight. I remember, I remember like 20 issues later um, when I came in reading some Doc Ock. Oh, well, I, I just like that panel too. Sometimes just the simple, not even simple, it's a complex panel. Him falling down and getting grabbed by Doc Ock's tentacles, but it's not really a money shot where, you know, you get a cool Spider-Man pose, but it's still neat. Oh, this is, like, this page is beautifully designed and inked and textured, and I really like that Aunt May up there with the Doc Ock and a great, uh, great Betty Brandt. Look at that Betty Brandt and Gwen Stacy. That's a nice, uh, that J. Jonas Jameson is pretty cool too, but that, that panel right there is just beautiful. Nice, strong. Oh, bashes him with his head. I, you, it's not a cool superpower. You bash people with your head. <laughs> ho, ho, Aunt May with a gun. Someone make a meme out of that one. <laughs> Very cool. I think we're onto the covers now. Oh, look at that face. Nice, nice dejected Peter Parker face there, too. That's beautifully drawn. Man, to capture that emotion like that, that is hard. Let's see what we got back here. We got the... Enter Doctor Strange. That looks like a uh, old pencil there. The Gibbon, John Romita. I love the way he did all the fur on the Gibbon. That's just kind of cool, all those brush strokes. My camera stopped recording just as I got to the end here. How annoying is that? Um, where was I? I was talking about the brush strokes and the gibbon. How this is in the box, so it's a Marvel 10th anniversary cover. Let me just have two more. And these are not from the covers that are in the issue. Suddenly, the Smasher. Not the most inspired of villains. I really like this cover lettering though. It's another 10th anniversary cover in the box. But it's the end of it since you can see the box has kind of disappeared. You notice in the end of those 10th anniversary covers, at first there was a box and then, then the kind of box expanded and then it disappeared altogether. <laughs> Best wishes to Vince, John Romita. Okay. Sold that to someone named Vince or gave it to him. I I wish I remembered who Marvel's cover letterer was at this time. That's some nice lettering there. It was Danny Crespi or somebody. I can't remember. But I like that. I like both those. Once again, lots of scraping in there. 
a little bit of scraping and man John Romita was doing a lot of scraping in those days then we come to the end of it we get a John Romita biography a little double page spread where they blew up a panel a little deconstructionist design as they call it but man oh there's the back cover oh that's striking very red Marvel 2013 Marvel oh man this this came out in 2013 that seems like forever ago oh well, there you go a little look at uh, John Romita's artist edition volume 2 hope you enjoyed it